The truss will break if the internal loads in any member exceed 400 pounds in compression or 375 pounds in tension. What load P will cause the truss to fail? The first thing I'm going to start with is my free body diagram. So I have P coming off the top. B is a pin, so I have BX and BY. D is also a pin, so I'll have DX and DY. But CD is a two-force member. So I can say, in fact, DY has to be equal to zero because a two-force member cannot carry a transverse load. So that's my free body diagram. But some of the forces in X, BX is equal to DX, given how I drew my forces, and BY has to be equal to P, since DY is equal to zero. If I take the sum of the moments at, say, point B, I'm going to have DX acting at a distance of 10 is equal to P times that dotted line in the middle there. What I want to do is I want to come in here and drop a perpendicular and say, first of all, this triangle, 6, 8, 10, that's a right triangle. So if I make this top angle theta and the bottom one phi, I can also say that this angle is theta. If I drop a perpendicular across, this is my dotted line. I can call it D, or you could look at the bottom triangle. Either way, either way you can say that sine of theta has to be 8 over 10, and sine of theta is my distance 8 times sine of phi. Sine of phi is 6 over 10, and I can just, for because we're going to need them later, go ahead and put cosine theta is equal to 6 over 10, and cosine of phi is equal to 8 over 10. That all comes from the trig of those couple triangles. Now I can say 10 dx is equal to p times 8 times 6 over 10, or dx equals 0 0.48 times p, and that has to be, of course, the same thing as bx. So now I know what my external loads are. I can start finding out what my individual loads are in each member. I'm going to start with the pin at d, because it's extremely easy. dx is 0.48p, so cd has to be that same thing. Now I'm going to do the load at a. If I look at the joint at a, I have ab and ac. This is my angle phi. Just because of similar triangles, this is theta. My sum of the forces in x says AB cosine phi plus AC cosine theta equals zero. Or you can substitute in what we had up there. AB times 8 over 10 plus AC times 6 over 10 equals zero. Or AB is minus 3 quarters of AC. The sum of the forces in y tells me AB sine phi equals P plus AC sine theta, AC is equal to negative 0.8P, AB is equal to 0.6P. I have one member left I don't know. I don't know BC. This is phi from my triangles from up top. So if I take the sum of the forces in Y, I get AC cosine phi plus BC equals zero. I know what AC is. So BC is negative times negative 0.8P times 0.8, which is 0.64P. So now, I know what my various loads are. AB is going to be 0.6P. AC is going to be negative 0.8P. CD is negative 0.48P. And BC is 0.64P. This is, of course, your maximum compressive load. And the other one, this is your maximum tensile load. Well, the maximum compression load has got to be 400 pounds because any bigger than 400 pounds and you've broken the truss. That gives you a P load of 500 pounds. The maximum tensile load is 0.64 P, because any bigger than that, and you've broken the truss. This gives you P is 585.94 pounds. Well, you can't get to this, because as soon as you've gotten to P equals 500 pounds, you broke the truss. So I, my, the answer to my question is 500 pounds will break the truss, or cause the truss to fail. Specifically, member AC fails in compression.